found it. Available, connected charger, yeah, device adapted, connect to network, select network, poor connectivity. <laughs> connecting to the charger. So the charger is now talking to the actual internet. This may take a second. It may update the software. It may do other things. So we just need to be a bit of a patience. One eternity later. Still connecting. Let's get energized today. Installation of Hypervolt 7 kilowatt charger. This is actually a really nice place. The cows are mooing just not far from here around the corner. <laughs> And that's where the charger is gonna go. This is this is the model of a hypervolt that we are installing. Quite interesting installation. We have a solar boost, we've got also a PV array. This is quite old. As you can see, it's been here for quite some time with the solar log. So what's happening in here? That's the installation for the outbuilding. This is for our PV side and incoming cables, which we're going to put our CT clamp on and MK fuse board. And for MK, we're installing bi-directional RCBO. Let me get that one for you. So when you can, you have to install either a separate fuse box or bi-directional RCBOs just to make sure that that possible DC current that flows back. If your car might have a fault or develop a fault, there is a DC current that will backflow into your installation, into a fuse board, freezing a standard RCD protection, which just invalidate all of your basic additional protection in your property. Very, very dangerous situation. Oh! That's why we have to install one of these to make sure your household is absolutely safe. So we'll put one of those bad boys in a fuse board and uh, we'll be good to go. I need to make some room to gain access. I will be aiming to actually feed the cable above these solar boosts and everything and side entry into the fuse board from the right. Let's take the cover off and actually see what's happening inside the actual board. Let's do it. Calculating the maximum demand on this bad boy. I did it before. I need to do a separate actually video how to calculate the maximum demand because it's just like one of those mysteries for a majority of electricians. Yeah, you just add up everything. No, that's not what you do. It's more complicated, but quite straightforward. We've got a formula how to do it and I'll explain to everyone so you all know how to do this. It's quite tight in there. Not a lot of space and a cobweb. Side entry, or actually, might be a decent room behind this board. Maybe we use that and we will do a bottom entry as a 20 mil uh, knockout. That might be a bit easier. Definitely need to clamp on. This would be life, it appears, but we'll double check. Hold on. These tails, are they 16? I think they are. With everything else, these are 25 for sure. These are 25s as well. These are 16. We might need to upgrade the tails. I agree with the client that this is where we put it. Aiming for the full stone, just to make sure that this is nice and line up. Nicely leveled. One, two, three. New toy alert. So at the moment, these are barely magnetic. So let's play with this. Vera magnet. That's what you should do. I don't know if we need to twist. Let's try now. Yeah, rubbish. Let's try the green side. I bought this uh, just to help me with these kind of installations. Okay. Oh, it's holding it like this. Yes. Well, actually it is a bit rubbish. From the edge to the center of the hole is 52 and a half. 52 and a half. Ladies and gentlemen, it is actually already in the uh, double, uh, well, not in a cavity, but in a brick wall. That's where this is the, just a gate. This already will be the stone wall. As you can see, it's a cavity wall. Uh, we're not going to go into a cavity, so we need to drill at this slight angle to find ourselves right in this corner and then up. 
So maybe what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna drill at the angle up. Starting is, so I've got actually something to bite on if I'm gonna use extreme angle, maybe a bit more. So over 10 centimeters here, so 10 centimeters depth and two and a half. So now if I drill, I'll find myself right in that corner. But I wanna go higher up. There are some cables, let's just double check this. Um, there is this okay well i'm gonna detach that just for safety there's nothing else in there no cool okay safe to drill and uh, double wall it's not 10 centimeters ladies and gentlemen let's just re uh, readjust our calculations there is a cavity in here as well so this will actually finish it's here so it's 25 centimeters so there 25 uh i need to have a steeper angle that's 25 is there just above that that doesn't feel right my brain is frozen give me a second <laughs> center 2.5 which is right there uh, because that's 2.5 is the difference between this wall and internal wall now now i got it and 2.525 is here so if anything i should be all right Ah, there we are. Okay. So what we have to do also, this is 25 mil. We need to secure the actual cable coming into the charger. So do the old waterproofing and IP rating. So we will put the gland. I'm considering either reverse gland. So the actual gland will be secure from the inside. For that, I'm just going to go with the 25 mil drill bit and uh, create just a, a little access inside. A few moments later. So that's what it is. We will have a piece of a conduit just sticking it out. I'm gonna put the adhesive around it to make sure it's all nicely waterproof. Drill the hole at the angle anyway, but that's what we should do always. And once I put the hypervolt, I'll drill the hole exactly where this is and secure it from the inside with that nut. And that will conclude our waterproofing. Just as you can see, this is where we are going at the back, right there, 25 millimeter max. And that's what we are using, 25 max. That just hooks onto these brackets. Here we go. That's it. View from the side, beautiful. Okay. We are going to drill 25 hole right there. Let's drill this in. Just double checking, yeah, oh happy days. Done, okay. We've got cable and I decided to go around and then do bottom entry. Is this 25? That's 20. Let's try this 20. <laughs> so now I'm just trying to get the knockout out. Cool, nice, not sharp, well done. These bad boys are not easy to put in, so I'm using a tiny small hammer just to hammer them in and they actually go in beautifully. Look at this. Nice. I may need to move all the grounds because that one is empty. That one here, that one there, and that one there, and that one there. Allowing me to clip onto number 13. 13! I'm not doing that. I'm going to put it here. We're not one of those people who are believing the number 13. 13 is a lucky number. Of course it is. Yeah. Hopefully it hasn't, yeah, it didn't go into the cavity. No, it did not. Cool. We're using this lovely product called Six Like SHIT. <laughs> it's pretty good. I usually double the cables over, put them in, and give them a little pull just to make sure they're fully secured inside. Beautiful. Okay. So at this point, I do not uh, actually put the cables in. This is the moment where I actually want to test them in beforehand. So CT1 connection and CT2 connection. CT1 and CT2. So what we do, as simple as, let's divert this around nicely. Here we go. And push in lovely jubbly. Okay, good. Okay, let's move it to insulation resistance. We know nothing is connected. Change it to 500 life to 
Earth. 500 and 999. Beautiful. Neutral to Earth. Beautiful. And life to neutral. Very nice. And at this point, we're going to measure R1 and R2. Earth, life. Well, it's zero, zero, zero. I know why. It's a very short distance from the EV to the actual cable to register that uh, resistance. It's actually too small. I've changed the scale. Yeah, not point, not one ohm. Cool, good for that one. Happy days. Lovely. We're gonna do white, orange with white, and we do orange with black. It doesn't matter, it's not polarity orientated. Hyper EV does give you a QR code to download the installer app. We will take you step by step. We're gonna make sure we answer all the questions. That's fixed, right? Clamp is solid, it's not gonna win anywhere, isn't it moving back and forth? Okay. There's a QR code in the book right there. Here we go. Scan. It will take you to your app store. Let's open it up. Yeah, I do have an account. Continue. Get started. Checking the app. Allow. Looking for your charger. Using Bluetooth. Cool. So, at that point, let's energize it. Found it. Available. Connected charger. Yeah, device adopted. Connected network. Select network. Poor connectivity. <laughs> Once we have a password, so client just type in the password connecting to the charger. So the charger is now talking to the actual internet. This may take a second. It may update the software. It may do other things. So we just need to be a bit of a patience. One eternity later. Also, what is very important on an installation for EV charger, you always must check this, is the size of a main fuse, but more important, the maximum demand, and just to make sure we're not overloaded. So the maximum demand for this property, when I calculate, is a lot of circuits. It's just been diversified a lot. So maximum demand in this case calculated, it would not work. It would need to be measured. This is an ALM, and this is automatic load management. So it's set to 60 amps. If Together with the charger, the load will be more than 60 amps. City clamp will listen to it, will record and understand what it is, and it will limit the charger to make sure we're not go over the 60 amps. You'll see it's actually pointing to number six down. Cool. Right, happy with that. Properly by hand, don't use uh, power tools. Clients just trying to charge the car. Okay, so the fun part is uh, finished. Now we have to complete the paperwork. Uh, domestic electrical installation certificate. If he's installed, the client has already tried to charge his uh, beautiful VW. It's a lovely car. It's all working. I finished the paperwork. So now register and sign up with the local council. But here we go. That's the beauty.